to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Your hope, your mighty, yes you are might, your mighty, your mighty, your righteous, your righteous, way make miracle walk from misty light in the darkness that is who you are we call you way make miracle walk from misty light in the darkness my god that is who Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Father, we pray that you speak to our hearts tonight and let Jesus be glorified. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much. Just a few minutes exhorting ourselves and then we pray. I sincerely want to thank the organizers for this opportunity to just share the word of God. Hallelujah. One of the ways that we get to know the Lord according to scripture, there are many ways that the Bible provides for knowing the Lord. Just play something for me. Thank you, sir. And one of the ways that the Bible provides for knowing the Lord is by studying his names there are four principal ways to know the lord as revealed in scripture number one is scripture itself scripture reveals the character and the modus operandi of the kingdom so by studying scripture you can understand the character of god number two the second way that we know the lord is through the names of god our encounter with the names of God are a revelation of the multifaceted dimensions in him. Every time man had an experience with God in the Bible, he preserved that experience in a name. So that every time you wanted to relieve that experience again, you would invoke that name. The third way we know the Lord is through the revelation of Jesus. Jesus came, the Bible says, as the express image of of the invisible God. He came as a correction and a clarification to our idea about God so that all the ideas we had about God as revealed through the prophets and so on and so forth, Jesus came as perfect theology, a, an explanation. The Bible calls him the image of the invisible God. And then the fourth way that we know God is through our experience. Job said, I have heard of thee with the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see at thee. Hallelujah. And so, speaking about the names of God, a name is a representation of not just a means of identity, but a name also represents an office. A name can represent an area of specialty. When you say doctor, you don't think nails and hammers you think hospital because in that name 
is a description of an area of specialty. Are we together? So in Exodus chapter 3, Moses has this encounter. And the Bible says that he saw a bush that was burning and yet would not be consumed. And he said, I will turn aside and see this great sight. And when God saw that he turned aside, he said, Moses, take off your shoes for where thou standest is holy ground. Fast forward, he now said, I have seen the affliction of my people. That they have been afflicted under their taskmaster. And I am come down to deliver them. If we can have scripture projected, let's look at Exodus chapter 3. And um, we'll begin our reading from, we'll look at verse 8, then jump to 13. So Moses is having this encounter. And then, now being sent by God, Moses asked the question. And he said, who shall I tell Pharaoh had sent me? And there was a reason for that. Because Pharaoh is not just a, a wonderful king over a territory. Pharaoh is a representation of a spirit. Are we together now? And he says, who do I tell them has sent me? And God said, tell them I am. He first said, I am that I am. Then he says, you go and tell Pharaoh, I am that sent you. He stored his name or his power and his dimensions in name. So in scripture, we see the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The manifestation of the God of Abraham is not the same as the manifestation of the God of Isaac. It is the same God, but the dimensions of operation is different. When you call him Rapha, when you call him Sikhin, when you call him Sabaoth, are we seeing now? There are different expressions, and so... When you call him the name Jehovah, Jehovah means the eternal one, the ever-existent one. That means one who does not have in him the ability to deteriorate or to fade. When you call him Jehovah, you mean the eternal one. So every other thing you tie to that name means he can do it consistently without fail. When you call him Jehovah Jireh, it means he does not just heal once. Because it is the eternal one healing. He can heal for as long as he exists. Do you have that understanding now? When you now call him Jehovah Shalom, he can give peace not just once. Because he is eternal, his peace is also everlasting. So when you call him Mephalti, when you give him that name, it is, it, is, it is a very deep... I wish I had time to walk and deal with that name because um, you have to understand the nature of bondage and oppression to appreciate this name that he is called. The one who delivers. The idea of deliverance does not just mean being separated from demons. It is... A system provided to separate you from anything that sustains the ability to stop your life from being an expression of the glory of God. So it is not just deliverance, separation from spirits. Deliverance is also separation from conditions and circumstances. Anything that sustains the ability to impede your experience in the life of God and to be a manifestation of the glory of God. His deliverance. Are we learning now? God's power to save and God's power to deliver has been shown all through scripture. I'll give you a few scriptures for reference. Let's see how many times um, or how fast the media can help us to achieve this. Just a few minutes and then we're done in prayer. The word deliverance or the word deliver occurs about 383 times in the entire Bible. And we have a few scriptures that reveal that God can and does manifest as a deliverer. Psalm 34 and verse 17. Psalm 34 and verse 17. It says, when the righteous cry for help. Right? I'll just give you the scripture for reference. I'm not sure that we may be able to catch up the pace of reading the scriptures. Psalm 34 and verse 17. Can we have it projected? 34 and 17. Let me turn my Bible so that we can just catch up very quickly. Psalm 
Amen. Psalm 34, 17. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them from out of all their troubles. That the righteous cry, and the Lord is able to respond to their cry. When you read Psalm 50 and verse 15, it says to call upon me in the day of trouble. Psalm 50 and verse 15. It says to call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. There are many other scriptures. Please just write it down for reference. Psalm 107 from verse 1 to 6. Psalm 34 and verse 4, the Lord delivered me from all my fears. And then let's look at 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. That is a very instructive scripture. Just to show you from scripture that the idea of deliverance is not a man-made concept. Scripture from Genesis to Revelation attests to the fact that in the dealings of God with men, he can manifest as a deliverer. And that deliverance can be both corporate and personal. Corporate as it was in the nation of Israel and personal as it were in the life of Daniel, in the life of Jonah. All of these individuals experienced deliverance. Can we look at 2 Peter 2 and verse 9? Do we have it now? 2 Peter 2 and verse 9. So we're dealing with the dimension of God that is able to bring a separation between an individual and the predicaments, the spirits, the conditions, or the influences that impede your manifesting the fullness of your life in Christ. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. The Lord knows how to deliver the righteous. That's what it says. Let me just quote for reference. The Lord knows how to deliver the righteous. That God knows. He has within his wisdom all of the strategies that need to be in place to bring deliverance to the righteous. Many stories talk about deliverance in scripture. I'll give you three or four just for reference. Number one, the deliverance of Israel. In Egypt, the land of bondage. You find that in Exodus chapter 12 from verse 29 to 32. In Daniel chapter 3, the Bible talks about the deliverance of the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel chapter 6 from verse 12 down to 23, we see the deliverance of Daniel himself from the den of the lion. In Mark chapter 5 from verse um, 15 upwards we see the deliverance of this madman in Gadara remember the Bible says Jesus crossed to the other side and he got to the land of the Gadarenes and met this man who had a legion of demons and Jesus set that man free and in his deliverance and in his salvation was the salvation of 10 cities hallelujah in Acts chapter 16, when you read from verse 25 to 34, the Bible talks about the deliverance of Paul and Silas. That Paul and Silas prayed, they sang, everyone heard them in the prison. There was an earthquake, the power of God came, they were delivered. The jailer was also free, he and his family. In Acts chapter 12, from verse 5 down to 17, we see that Peter was rescued from prison when James was beheaded. It pleased the people and they now put Peter in prison. But the Bible says something very interesting. It says, but prayer was made of the church unto God for him. And an angel came and delivered him. So we see through scripture that number one, among the many ways God responds to man, in the dealings of God with man, there is a provision that he manifests as a deliverer. And that the subject and the idea of deliverance is consistent with God's character as revealed from scripture. Several instances as stated here show that God is able to deliver. Now my, my, 
my concern tonight within this session that we have is not just conscientizing us on the idea of deliverance but the keys because you see most times your christian experience will remain a plethora of frustrations when you know what should be but you do not have the keys to make it happen are we together now it is very frustrating to know what should be i know i should be free i know i should be healed i know that the path of the just the bible declares should be as the shining light shining ever brighter I know that when men say there is a casting down, I should say there is a lifting up. But now the spiritual dynamics to make that your experience because between prophecy and experience is light. You need knowledge to be able to translate prophecy into experience. Just because it is written does not mean it will manifest. Between it is written and the manifestation, there there are keys the bible calls them the keys of the kingdom or the mysteries of the kingdom matthew 13 and verse 11 jesus was teaching the disciples and he says it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven the modus operandi that means these are the keys that translate the prophetic dimension of the word of god to become our experience are we learning now so that we do not just sing and celebrate it's been an awesome time with all of the worshipers the men women of god coming to just pour their hearts but so that we do not live with an emotional experience alone only to go back to a cycle of pain and frustration it is important that in addition to all that has been done that god would hand us a few keys you see doors do not open because of time doors do not open because of the size of the one who wants to enter doors open because the key to open them is there as small as a key can be if you lose that key you can stand in front of that door for so long hallelujah keys are also referred to as light in scripture john 1 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not when god wants to bless you he grants you the keys of the kingdom there is only one key to the kingdom jesus but there are the keys of the kingdom the keys that help us to navigate our path even unto victory if we are together say amen there are four keys i wrote down here i don't know how many of them i can touch but number one the first key revealed as far as activating this dimension of god as a deliverer is concerned the first key revealed in scripture is prayer the priesthood ministry of prayer hallelujah when you read psalm 18 the bible says i will call upon the lord i will call upon the lord who is worthy of praise I will call upon him he is worthy of praise in Luke chapter 18 and verse 1 Jesus spake a parable the Bible says to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint so prayer is not for those in trouble prayer is for men please look up God never prayed as God but when God became a man he prayed and since he left back to heaven as a man he is still praying all men pray because prayer among the many things that prayer achieves is number one your transformation but prayer gives the legitimate framework upon which god can come and walk in your life and come even to help in your situation when they called upon him he heard are we together now very very important James chapter 5 and verse 13, the Bible says, Is any man afflicted? He didn't say let him roam around wondering what to do. That the moment you see that there is affliction in and around your life, the biblical recommendation to affliction is prayer. He says, For Elijah was a man of like passion, and he prayed earnestly. He didn't just lament. He prayed earnestly that there be no rain for a space of three and a half years and he prayed again 
So when I want to see God manifest as a deliverer in my life, I must engage the priesthood ministry of prayer. The heaven of heavens, the Bible says, belongs to God, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. It's amazing that prayer is the greatest biblical proof of humility. Listen to me. Prayerlessness is pride. It is proof that you do not need the assistance of the government that you are under. When you pray, it is proof of humility. More than just a proof of spirituality. When men do not pray, they declare independence as far as the assistance of heaven is concerned. We must pray as proof that we need God. We must pray as proof that we know we are incapacitated, unassisted. Hallelujah. Number two, very quickly. The second key that the Bible gives us to release that deliverance dimension of God is the mystery of praise. Praise. Praise even with understanding. Psalms 149, please write it down and you can go and read the whole chapter. But the Bible says, let the high praise of God be upon their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands. Praise is more than just singing and dancing. It's a mysterious instrument of warfare. You see this happen in the days of Jehoshaphat. The Bible says when it was clear that defeat was imminent, they had to put down their swords and put all those who were in the ministry of praise in front. And as they began to sing and declare and say, you are good and your mercy endures forever, the Lord himself set ambushment in the camp of the enemies. Praise is powerful. If and when done with understanding. Praise. Number three. The third key, if you want to see God manifest as a deliverer in your life, is the power of sacrifice. Now, this is a, this is a dimension that very few believers understand. Sacrifice is more than money. When Elijah and the prophets of Baal, please look up in Mount Carmel, when Elijah gave them a chance to call upon Baal, notice the progression. When they started, they started by prayer, calling him and it did not work. The last card they used was to begin to lacerate themselves and to bring blood out. There was something they knew about sacrifice and attracting the presence of deity. Psalm 50 and verse 5 says, gather unto me my saints. It says, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Are we learning? Are we learning? Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 10. Please write it down. This is very important. First, read it. 1 Samuel 7 and verse 10. 1 Samuel 7 and verse 10. The Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. It says, but the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines. And discomfited them and they were smitten before Israel. The Philistines were coming to frustrate Israel. But Samuel knew that the secret was not just fighting physically. By physical contest they would defeat them hands down. And he engaged the mystery of sacrifice. Sacrifice is powerful. You can turn battles around. You can turn situations around. At the instance of sacrifice. Men and women have engaged this with understanding. The key is not the activity. The key is the understanding that sponsors what you are doing. That was the principle that God himself used to deliver us from the power of sin and Satan. Sacrifice. Not a suggestion. He did not use his will as God. Even though he was creator. Because there are rules of engagement. He had to bring Jesus Christ. He didn't bring Jesus to come and preach and counsel us and go back. There had to be blood, death, burial. If Jesus did not die, we would not say, Oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? He had to sow Jesus as that one sacrifice. His first and only begotten. And now today, Jesus is not his first and only begotten. He has become the first among we the begotten. Sacrifice is powerful. Maybe God is speaking to someone. You're watching or you are here listening. 
that it might be that the reason why certain things have refused to shift over your life, especially patterns that are connected to bloodline, especially patterns that are connected to ancestry, there is a place for sacrifice and you can break down certain walls in an instant. The fourth key that causes God to be made manifest in the life of an individual as a deliverer is the prophetic. I do a quick recap. Number one, the power of prayer. Number two, the power of praise. Number three, the power of sacrifice. And number four, the prophetic. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. Prophets are God's authorized instruments of deliverance and preservation. It is God that does it, but he does it at the instance of his prophets. He took a prophet speaking and he said, by this time tomorrow, over Samaria. And an intelligent economist contended with prophecy and said, no, no, no. Even if God will open the windows of heaven, this might not happen. And he said, you will see it so that you will know that God does not lie but you will not experience it. He died right at the gate that led to breakthrough. The prophetic is powerful. Now here and there, the prophetic may have been abused across Africa and sadly across our nation, but make no mistakes. Within the boundary of scripture and within the jurisdiction of accuracy, the prophetic is a wonder. There are many dimensions to the prophetic. There is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic that exhorts and plants faith in you. But there is the creative dimension of the prophetic that makes what has no business happening in your life to happen. The Bible says, and there was a voice that said, destroy it not, for there is a blessing in it. The prophetic. You find that in Psalm Isaiah chapter 65 verse 8. Let me read it as a last scripture and then we'll pray. Isaiah 65 and verse 8. Because someone's life is turning around now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 65. And verse 8. 65 and verse 8. Please write it and make sure you read it up. Isaiah 65 and verse 8. Thus saith the Lord. As the new wine is found in the cluster. And one say for my servant's sake, wine in a cluster and you're about to throw it. Someone stops you and say, no, don't destroy it. There's something valuable in it. God is saying as my servant declares, so will I do. That means when the devil is out to destroy your life and your family, there is a prophetic voice that comes as, a, as an interceptor and says, touch not this family, touch not this destiny. There is prophecy. There is a blessing in it. It is one thing to know that God is a deliverer. But it's another thing to know how to activate that grace for deliverance. Maybe I should add one more scripture as we pray. Exodus chapter 6 and verse 3. Exodus chapter 6 and verse 3. The full text is 1 to 3. But let's just read 6 and verse 3. Exodus 6 and verse 3. Here's what God said. He's speaking to Moses now. And God spake unto Moses, verse 2 now, and said unto him, I am the Lord. He says, and I appeared unto Abraham, Isaac, unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, I was not known to them. Do you know what that means? Just because you have seen a dimension of God does not mean you will experience every dimension of God. He appeared unto them as the God of Abraham. He appeared unto them as the Almighty God. But they had never seen him reveal himself as Jehovah. Look up, please. Could it be that you have seen God as the who provide and make for fruitfulness? But maybe you have not seen this dimension of God as a deliverer. The one who can separate you from anything that is antichrist in your life the pressure the challenges whatever it is it is within his power to bring that separation whether it is a spirit influence whether it is a situation and a, a circumstance that seems to defy god over your life 
God is able to reveal himself as the Lord, my deliverer, not our deliverer. This is a personal issue now. God is able to come to you and uniquely deal with any situation that seems to mock God in your life. Can we take a minute or two to pray? You have stretched, you have waited, please stand. I want to lend my voice with come right from morning. Just speak one minute. I want you to make mention of one area in your life that has not been a clear representation of the life and the grace and the glory of God. One area you know, one challenge that you know must go down like Dagon. It says, but in everything by prayer and supplication, even with thanksgiving, let your request be made known. Don't assume he knows. Let your request be made known. Someone is praying, following online from any and everywhere. Make sure you connect by faith. Go ahead and pray. This situation of childlessness, this situation of health, this situation in my job, my place of work, my spiritual life, it looks like there is a gradual decline. I'm just plunging down and down. Go ahead and pray. I want to agree and release my faith with you. The Bible says, these Egyptians you see today, that you will see them no more forever. I am he that was dead and now is alive and I hold the keys. And it is because of the presence of that key of David that he can open a door that no man can shut. And he can shut a door that no man can open. You are praying. You are praying. Pray for your children. Pray for your spouse. Pray. Everything that show up over that situation as the one who delivers. the dead you have spent time here from morning to the afternoon and to the night listen let me tell you something about priesthood you see when we speak when god calls a man and a people learn this there are four things that validate that a man is truly sent by god number one when god sends you there is always a message and a mandate when I sent you, go, say. He tells you what to say. And your message is a dimension of his glory and his face he has revealed to you through your experience. That becomes your message. Number two, when God sends a man, he will grant you access to divine backing. You are never truly sent until there is a throne in heaven that supports what you do. This is what gives us the confidence to make decree over lives and to be sure that those lives would never remain the same. It is not the excellency of speech, but the confidence that we have that the one who sits upon that throne is investing his jealousy upon the call he's given us and would not allow any word to fall without finding performance. Number three, when God truly sends a man, the third thing he gives you is access to resources. Men and material resources. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything. Not when you went. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything. And number four, the fourth thing that he gives you when he sends you is a platform. There has to be a platform that gives you visibility and will cause the nations to hear your voice. I don't know why I brought this, but I believe this is a prophetic word for someone. You are saying, Lord, I still I need to confirm. Did you really send me? Because it looks like I don't even know what to pray for. This is what to pray for. Clarity of your message. Number two, clarity of the backing. You have to contend like Jacob with God until you have power with God. It says, for as a prince, you have had power with God and you have prevailed. And he touched the whole of his thigh and blessed him. And the Bible says, Jacob called that place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is spared. When God calls you, he really backs you. He does back you. 
So you have, to, if you do not see the evidence of his backing, it is your responsibility to go back and flog it out in the secret place and verify, Lord, you have sent me. Do not leave me alone. Moses said, do not let me depart from here if your presence will not go with me. And then number three, resources. There are many of us who are truly sent, but the people to hear you and to appreciate and even to place a demand upon that grace, they are not there. And you keep moving around as though you are not called. You need to pray. There is a grace that compels men to listen to that which God has put in you. It's called anakazo. It's a compelling power of the spirit. It says go and compel them. Go to the byways and compel them. And then for resources, when he sends you, even a fish will carry coin for your sake. A fish that has no business carrying coin, it will carry coin and come and meet you with it. So that the tribute collectors will not embarrass you on account of your commitment. Because every time you give all to God, Satan will manipulate the system. And the tribute collectors will come and probe you and say, if you are really sincere representing God, fulfill your dues. So he makes sure that the tribute collectors have the coin waiting for them. When he sends you, he provides. I'm saying that because this is what I'm going to speak and declare over your life. And then the platform. There are many gifted and graced people who are quiet in hiding like David in the cave of Adullam. No visibility. Peter was one who would be one of the chief cornerstones of the apostles. But a tragedy happened to him. They locked him and they kept him bound hand in chain so that his voice would be silenced. But the Bible says prayer was made by the church to God for him. And when the angel came, there were three levels of deliverance. Number one, he broke him out of the first gate. He was out of bondage, but the city was not yet seeing him. Then he moved past the second gate. And then he came to a mysterious gate called the iron gate that opens to the city. There is a gate that when it opens, the next thing you see is the city. You can be free from prison, but if the iron gate is still shut, the nations will not hear your voice. You can be in a territory where you have products. You are a man of God. You are a business person. Listen to me. I didn't come to waste your time tonight. I came to speak because there are gates that should not be open. It should be broken. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder so that your children and your children's children can pass. Peter was out of the prison. But he was still in bondage. He came to a gate called the iron gate that opens to the city. When that gate is opened, you contact a grace called the hear ye him anointing. And whether you climb the mountain, they will come. Whether you go by the sea, they will come. There is a grace called hear ye him. It's an instruction to creation. Hear ye him means whatever it would take. To make sure this voice is not silenced. Whether it is resources. Whether it is partners. Whatever it would take. Oh donkey if you must speak, speak. Oh fish if you must bring coin, bring it. Let me declare over someone here. In the name of Jesus Christ. I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. And I speak over your life and your destiny. You have tabernacled here from morning even till now. I call upon my God who is also your God. That in the name of Jesus. Every door and every gate. Standing your way. To, uh, to, that is not allowing you to find visibility. I speak to that door and that gate. A fata be opened. In the name of Jesus. Be opened. In the name of Jesus, gates of influence, gates of finances, ministerial gates, gates over territories. In the name of Jesus, by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic, I declare over those gates, be open now. Be open now. And the gates will say, who is this king of glory? And I reply, the Lord strong and mighty. The one mighty in battle. Every stagnation in your life. Listen, you know there is delay in your life when the only thing growing is your age. If the only thing growing in your life is in your age, you are in trouble. 
because the bible says in luke 2 52 it says and jesus increased in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men i prophesy to you in the name of jesus who died and rose again everything that has you don't have to come forward i decree and declare everything tying you down in one place so that you see even your contemporaries come and move forward and you live in pain and regret i speak to you by the power that raised christ from the dead be released right now go forward in the name of jesus hear me the bible says it was the lord that caused moses and aaron to advance people do not just go forward it takes more than desire to advance there is the hand of god that can come upon a man i decree and declare whatever has stopped you from advancing hear me by the power of prophecy i speak over your life go forward now in jesus name and there are people who are going forward but in truth you are not making progress something that should be done in a in a month is taking five years the hand of the lord came upon elijah and elijah ran and overtook the chariots of ahab down to jezreel i decree and declare the grace for speed 10 years in one year may that grace come upon you 10 years in one year one year in one month in the name of jesus christ exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. Be part. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. I decree and declare the grace for favor that can bring ease and acceleration to a life. May that grace rest upon you. I'm almost done. The Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph, and they brought him out of his dungeon. There are times you are gifted, but you do not have access to the palace. You will need someone already in the palace to speak for you. Joseph pleaded with the wine presser and said, please, when you go, advocate my honesty. The wine presser's forgetfulness added two extra years to the pain of a man. I don't know who should remember you and has forgotten you and is multiplying your pain and delay that night could not the king sleep and he said bring me the chronicles and they opened and saw where mordecai had saved his life but was not rewarded i stand by prophecy and i declare may the book of remembrance be open concerning you this night in the name of jesus christ May the book of remembrance be open concerning you in the name that is above all names and the bible says they lost the donkey of kish and saul went around looking for that donkey and for three days they could not find it and then the servant said there is a man he's a seer let's stop this labor of shadow boxing and go circumspect and they met this mysterious man called Samuel. And Samuel said, go up and I will tell you what is in your heart. And as soon as he encountered the prophet, three things happened. Number one, he said the donkey that has been missing has now been restored. Let me speak to you that everything that has left your life that should not have left, provided it is on earth, I command it to find its way back to your destiny. Number two, he says as you return, you will meet three men holding two loaves of bread. They will salute you and give to you. Say honor. I declare, may that mantle and grace for honor. Where you have been deserted so that no man will pass through you. I call you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. And then he says, you will come to the garrison of the Philistines. And that there the hand of the Lord will come upon you. And the spirit of God came upon an ordinary gentleman. And Saul was turned into another man. I pray for you. The way you entered this auditorium, the way you came for this program, is not the way you will return back. You entered empty, void of favor, void of wisdom, void of access to light. But I empower you. Go back full of light. Go back full of wisdom. Go back full of grace. Go back full of favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
And hear me. Everything connected to witchcraft and ancestry and orchestrations of darkness that will not let you stand in the liberty where which Christ has brought you into. I speak over you. The Bible says we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. Therefore, I separate you from everything that is connected to bloodline and foundations and ancestry. Be free for it now and forever. In the name of Jesus. For my Bible declares blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. It says he nailed it to his cross. Let there be no railing accusation against you from the pit of hell. You stand like Joshua the high priest and that robe that is stained is removed from you and a new robe is given to you. I declare be blessed in Jesus name. And for all the organizers, I pray for you. A worker is worthy of his wages. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Go from glory to glory. Go from grace to grace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God. Our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.